Hi, uh, today we're going to install a front-end development environment on a Windows machine and I've outlined here the tasks that we're going to be looking at. First of all, setting up a github.com account if you don't already have one um, and then we're going to install the get program on the local computer, this Windows computer. Uh, once we've got git installed we are going to create the SSH secure shell key on the on our local computer and then we'll copy the public part of that key out to github.com and that will allow us to communicate push files uh, back to github.com from the local machine without having to enter our username and password every time. So Git is a, is a program that runs locally. github.com is a place where we can store repositories on the cloud and we want to be able to move files from our local machine up to github.com. So we'll do that and then we'll also on Windows we'll get will the git install will give us a git bash program and git bash will allow us to run on the local command line as we'll be running some commands that will allow us to interact with github.com. And then after we're done with that we will set up the Visual Studio Code IDE and this is a free software that will give us the ability to edit our files and basically manage them and work with uh, our operating system to be able to move them up to the cloud. Um, I will also be just checking in on some preferences and plugins for the Visual Studio Code environment to make the development process easier. You know, we'll have <clears throat> install a, a little server that will make it easy to preview the work that we do before we commit it to the cloud. All right, so let's take a look at uh, signing up for GitHub. All right, let's take a look at setting up an account on GitHub. So if you go to the github.com page on the web and click on sign up for GitHub, it should take you to a form. Now you can see it filled in my name uh, because I've already got an account, but um, what you want to do is put your username, um, which, and, and these are not the correct even autofills. It should be Rebecca Peltz and then um, and you can see the name's already taken and then um, the email, let's see, Rebecca Peltz at gmail.com and you want to remember what these this username and email is because you'll be using that to configure locally your Git program. So just keep in mind you want to remember your username and your email that you use and then create a password Okay, and um, and then click on create account. So once you've um, created that account, then you will be able to sign in. And here I'll just sign in right now, and you will have this screen here. Uh, this over on the right here will be your kind of account area. You can see there's a little picture of me. You can add your picture if you want, um, and then. Uh, if you go to Profile and Repositories, this is where all of your repositories um, will live. So you can see I already I have a lot of them. You won't have any at this point if it's brand new. So this is how you sign up for GitHub.com and just remember the username and email. And notice that I access this page it uses that username so that becomes an important part of accessing your account is that username. All right. So let's take a look at some instructions here for installing on Windows. Basically we're just going to go out to the web and download this um, this program for Git and you can see that mine started downloading immediately. So you want the 64-bit version of Git. Most Windows operating systems running Windows 10 are running 64-bit. So, so there's a choice between 32 and 64. And to some degree, this page can detect what you need and it will just start out downloading it for you. So once it's downloaded, um, if you go to the show in folder, you'll see there's your executable program. 
and if you double click on it it will install the get program for you so um, it's going to ask you if you're sure you want to do it because you, it can it knows that you've downloaded this from the web and for security reasons just wants to check um, I hope that you have set yourself up as an administrator on your Windows. That will make installing programs a lot easier. Uh, and if you have questions about doing that, um, please uh, contact one of us to help you with that. Um, so there are ways around it, but generally you want to make yourself, if you're a developer, administrator on your Windows machine. So we're just going to take the default settings um, for all of these choices in this uh, install wizard and just hit next to just take the, in, the defaults. And this will then install that program, the Git program, on your local machine. So while that's going on, let's just take a look. Now, once that's installed, like I said before, we're going to get a copy of this Git Bash program. So you're actually getting several programs with this Windows <coughs> installation. And you'll want to use Git Bash uh, instead of the Windows command line or PowerShell, as it is more in line. Bash is a, a, an acronym for Born Again Shell, which is one of the flavors of Linux shell commands and that means the commands that you can type on the command line um, so using git bash will allow you to operate more in tune with the way that git intends you to interact with it and it's it's um, going to be automatically installed for you okay so the, the the installation is complete and you can see they even have launch git bash Let's go ahead and just check that. And so when this is complete, we don't really care about the re the release notes, but let's take a look at Git Bash. So Git Bash again, it's it's a command line, um, and I have some notes in this uh, document um, on some basic command lines. But Print Working Directory gives us a look at where we are at. So I'm in the C users Becky, which is my home directory. If I type cd tilde from any place, it will always take me back to this directory. And if I type the ls command, it will list any files, and, and there's a lot of them, files and directories, uh, under my uh, Becky folder here. In the next step, we just verify that Git is installed. So to do that, we can do either or both of these um, commands on the Git command on the Git bash command line. So we can say Git dash dash version, which shows us we're at version 2.18, or which Git, which shows us where Git is located. So it's in bin Git. So both of those verify that we have this installed. Now uh, let's close out this git bash that, that was open for us automatically at the end of the install. And how do we open it when we don't have it already open? The way is just press the Windows button. That's the button that's just to the left of the Alt key. And just type in git bash. And you can see it comes up. And then it will open up. And it always opens up in your home directory. Now we're ready to start working with the Git to do a couple of things. One, we're going to install the SSH keys, which will allow us to connect to GitHub. And the other is we will um, set up some configuration for Git, letting it know our username and password. Uh, in these slides, I've got a couple of resources here, and these are Watts FAQ, first and second questions. Uh, so if you go to these, you can actually see the instructions that I'll be executing here. So I'm just going to follow along with these. So there's one set of instructions 
on setting up an environment with Visual Studio Code, which we'll get to next. And then there's this set of instructions on installing Git locally. So this is where we are right now. And you can see we've done the install. We know we, we've checked our version and we've got Git installed. The next thing that we want to do is set up the SSH keys. So we're going to make sure this is just something when you're working with SSH that you don't want to overwrite keys that you've already created because you may have connections to other servers out there. And I doubt that you do if you're running this setup program, but we'll just check this out anyway. So if you're sitting in your home directory, you type ls-al tilde slash dot ssh and you can see it's telling me that there is nothing to list there it doesn't exist and basically what that command is just saying list all information including information on hidden files and directories starting at my home directory look under the dot ssh directory so anytime you have a dot in front of a directory in or a file in bash um, in unix systems it means it's a hidden directory. Um, and so if I had just said ls, well, I don't, it's not there anyways, but you can't, you, so the dash al helps you to see hidden folders and directories. Uh, so we see it's not there, so we can go on to the next step. If we, we're kind of, what we're looking for is an id underscore rsa pub file, and that will contain the public key that we need to be able to, uh, connect to share with github.com so we can connect to it. So we're ready to do the key gen and the key gen is a program and we're just going to run it just like this. Sometimes I will just take a copy, just control C that and control V it. Actually we think we have to hit paste so I'm right click paste and I'll just change this to my email. So Rebecca Peltz at gmail.com. That's the email I used to sign up for GitHub with. Um, and just run this program. And it's going to generate the private key, public key pair, which those are two separate files. Um, it's going to ask you some questions, and we're just going to take the default name, the ID underscore RSA, and pa paraphrase passphrase, I'm not even going to use one. It's sort of like a pin, kind of like an extra password. Um, but just to keep things simple, I will just leave that blank and then it will just double check and I'll, I'll just hit enter and leave it blank. And then you'll get this image, this random art image when you're done creating the keys. And now if I type in ls, la, L, LA or al um, dot ssh or it, it, tilde slash dot ssh, same thing because I'm in the root in my home directory, you can see it created the two files. Now, this id underscore rsa is a private key file, so I'm not going to show you that. You, you want to keep that hidden. That's not something that you share. But the, but what's in this id rsa pub, you're going to eventually copy that to um, out to um, the github.com. So in order to get the contents of that file, I'm going to use the cat command, and that's a concatenate, short for concatenate, and basically it will just list out a file. So I can say .ssh slash idrsa dot pub. I don't have to put the tilde slash in front of it because tilde slash just is, means my home directory and I know I'm already there. So tilde, I'm just going to say cat RSA. Okay, so you get this this big chunk of data, which is your um, your public key file, and you can see it ends with the email that you used, and it starts with SSHRSA. So now I'm just going to copy this into my clipboard by highlighting it, and then I'll just right click copy, because in a little bit I'm going to be pasting that into GitHub.com. So these notes just show you um, the, the, what we just went through, where we took the defaults on all of those. The next thing we want to do is to start up this agent. So this is a local uh, kind of background program that we're going to run that will make it so that our system can detect that we are running 
SSH, that we're using SSH. And so I'm just going to paste that. I just copied that, and I'm going to paste that. Oops. I guess we've got that in our buffer. Let's, we'll, we'll have to come back to pick up that key again. But let's just grab, we want to just, I like to use copy and paste because it can prevent some of the typos. So if I just copy that and then go back to git bash and then paste it, run that, and it creates an, an agent PID. So that's just a process ID. It's going to be running in the background. The number doesn't matter. That's just a, a random ID that it generates. Uh, and then I'm going to add this process. I'm going to add this key to that process. So I'll copy that command and paste it into Windows. And we've now added that. So we've got the SSH key agent and key in, in there. So now we're ready to copy that contents of that file to the GitHub account. So let's go back and we're going to do our cat command dot ssh id rsa pub. And again, just you can just select this with your mouse or your trackpad and then copy it. And then you're going to take that and you're going to go out to your github.com. Okay, we've got github.com. And we're going to go to settings and then SSH and GPG keys. You can see I have a lot of them because I connect from a lot of different places. And I'm going to say new SSH key. And what I use for a title is um, something that helps me know what machine this came from. And I'm working on a Windows uh, Surface laptop now. So I'll just type that for the name and that can be whatever you want it's just a description to help you uh, identify that key uh, where you put that key and then in here you can just paste so that key that we catted in the command line is now available here and we just say add ssh key and it should go down to the bottom and there it is you can't really read it there so now let's go back to the notes we have actually created our SSH key and we have copied it down there. Um, so the next thing is we want to do a little configuration. And it's not, not too much here. All we need to do is we're going to go into our command line and set the global username and the user email. This says Mona Lisa, but again, use your, use your the username that you use to sign up for GitHub. And so if I go back here, I'll just paste that in there. And I used Rebecca Pelt, so I... Okay, so that's set up. And then this um, get config dash global dash dash global user email. And then I'll just put in the user email, and this is my private email. But you just want to be sure you use the email that you used when you set up that account. Okay. And then there's there's some actual a link to GitHub help where they basically go through these same steps. Um, so now we are in a position to connect to GitHub. And when we work on the first project, our local project, you'll see how that all works. All right, let's go look at the notes and see where we're at in this install. So the task, we've created the GitHub account. We've installed Git on the local computer, we looked at Git Bash, um, used it to generate our SSH key, um, and then added username and email, and then copied the public key out to GitHub settings. So we're really done with the Git GitHub installation. And now we can look at installing Visual Studio. So let's see, to install Visual Studio on Mac or Windows, we're just going to go out to this uh, code Visual Studio com download. And most downloads just, in, you know, most installs just involve pulling a download um, off of the, and we, we've got Windows. And again, we don't want 32-bit Windows. We really should be able to use 64 bit windows let's see download but looks like they don't have it okay 
we'll just take 32 bit. Um, Oh, it said 32-bit, but in fact we got a 64-bit down here. So you can see it just dropped down into my downloads, and there's the 64-bit. So let me, I just like to go in and have a look at this before I click on it. And yes, I'll just click on that to do the install. And yes, it's okay to install this. And then I accept the agreement and it'll place it on the program files, Visual Studio Code, leave the add path. Um, I pretty much just take the defaults. Um, I like to add this open with code to Windows Explorer and open with code. It's just a way like if I'm in the, um, if I'm in the, the GUI Explorer, I can just right click on something and have it open in code. Um, create a desktop icon that's entirely up to you if you use those and so next and then install so this is just going to get this installed on my local program and while that's installing let's take a look at the next step so and again this is all defined in this setup dev environment with Visual Studio Code so you can see we just downloaded and installed it and then plugins and I have a couple of plugins that I recommend um, to everybody. So when we get to that, we'll do that. This live server plugin will allow you to preview your code, whether HTML um, or, um, you know, if you're working on JavaScript, you can serve it up with that. So it's, have, it's a basically a local server that will not allow you to install it. Now, if you're in the view um, class, if you're using the view command line interface, it actually comes with its own server. So you wouldn't need live server for that. But it's just really handy to have your own server to render your, your code before you push it up. So here we are. This is what Visual Studio Code is going to look like. It, it opens it up for you. And there's not really much here. You can see um, on the left there is a navigation and you have um, kind of your file system, something you you might be familiar with from Code Envy, so that kind of, as you create files they'll show up over here on the left. There's a search area that lets you search through all the files. <clears throat> there is a um, get integration here where you'll be able to see once you have a get project uh, running, you'll be able to see differences between what you've edited and what uh, what's up on GitHub. There's a debugger, and here is the location of the uh, plugins. So um, the two plugins I would take are Live Server, and you can see when you find a plugin, there's going to be an install key. This is just like a little bit of extra programming. You can see there's a lot of plugins here. So as you work with this tool and work with different types of languages or, or, you know, Markdown, whatever, you can find tools that can help you. But Live Server, we're going to take that. And so you just click on Install. And then um, once it's installed, it'll pop up with a Reload button. So you always are um, installing and then reloading the application. So we'll click on Reload and well we won't see anything yet but when we start working on a project you'll see where that comes up the other one i take is beautify and this just gives you some um some uh, formatting to help keep your code clean and it helps you to keep from getting into too much trouble with typos and things like that so you can see three million people use it it's got high ratings that's kind of what i look for when i'm picking out new um plugins to use. So we'll just do another install and then we'll get the reload. So now we actually have the plugins that I want to get. Alright, so we've got some plugins and on this uh, FAQ page you can see a description of these and we'll look more closely when we work on a project in this environment at how to use these the live server and the beautify but this just describes it what I want to do next is make a few changes to user settings so 
one thing is if there's that mini map that's when it shows you all the code kind of condensed over on the right hand side I don't really want to have that so I'm going to do that and then I also want there is an integrated terminal that you get with um, that you uh, get with Visual Studio Code I'll show you what that looks like uh, if you're in Visual Studio Code and you hit Control and backtick, and the backtick key is right under the Escape key, so if I hit Control backtick, it brings up a terminal, and it notices as you can change the default terminal shell by selecting Customize. I'm not going to do that. I'll I'll show you another way. But right now the terminal that's running is PowerShell, and we're going to change that to Git Bash because that will make the work a lot easier, and we can follow along with with what going on in videos and things like that. Um, but this is the terminal. It's just like um, running a terminal. You know, if you typed CMD, the command for Windows, it's that's what you get. Or in this case, PowerShell. But we're going to change that to Git Bash. Um, and that again, this terminal, if it's a toggle, if you hit Control Tick again, it goes away. So you can open and close it. And it's really handy to be able to access that terminal right from within your code, your coding area, your integrated development environment. All right, so let's go take a look at the commands that we want to do to make that happen. We are going to do this in user settings. And so to do that, we will, well, let's, first of all, I'm going to just grab this one here. So I'll control C that into my, I'll go, copy that into my buffer. And then I'll head over here if you open file and then preferences settings so um, what you can see here is that I have a user setting so on the left here I'll close this a little bit on the left I have the default settings for my workspace and on the right I have a kind of empty user settings it, it actually um, is written in JSON, which you may not have studied yet, but it's it's like JavaScript. And so you have this open uh, curly braces, closed curly braces, and your settings will go in there. So when you want to change one of these settings, you basically find them and you copy it over and then you change what you want it to be. Well, I happen to know that I definitely want to remove that mini map, so I'll just paste that right in there. And then if I add any more settings, I have to comma separate it. So these settings are basically a list of comma separated key value pairs. So now I've turned off the minimap. And then there's one more I want to grab for Windows users, and that is the integrated shell. So I'll just copy that into the clipboard, and then I'll come and paste it right there. Okay, so now I've set git bash to be my integrated terminal. So let's, um, we'll save that. And you can either do a file save or you can hit control S in Windows to save it. Okay, and then I can close this user settings out. And then um, I'm going to close and reopen Visual Studio Code. So close it. And then to open it, it's very simple. I'm just going to hit the Windows key and type in code. So it goes by the name code. And there it is, Visual Studio Code. And now, if I hit the control tick, you can see I've got bash. And with bash, I can type my ls command. I can type pwd. You know, I can do all of the bash commands. Um, in this document, down at the bottom, I have summarized a few things. One, I've got a picture of where that tick key is, that back tick. And I've got some, we're going to get to those git commands. And then these are some of the bash commands that I, I've been using here too. So now you have the ability to run bash commands and just like you'll be able to work just like Mac users with a bash interface. All right, so we've gotten to all of our VS Code installed and the preferences and plugins set. Um, the next thing that we want to do is just to go back and look at our task list. 
And we now can say that we've com completed all of the tasks. We've got github.com, we've got git on the local computer, we've got the Visual Studio IDE with some preferences and plugins installed. So now I'm going to end this video and there will be a separate video that will walk you through um, getting a uh, cloning a project from github.com down onto your local environment and then working with it, modifying code and pushing it back up. But for now this video is done. You've got a local environment installed here. All right.